All right, welcome to the channel. I'm going to take you through a quote unquote portrait edit. It's actually a full body shot uh, that I took this summer with model Dominique Ruffin. And makeup artist here was the fantastic Cynthia Hernandez. She's now in Vegas and LA. So I'll take you through the shot and I'll, I'll link this, the, the raw file below. If you want to follow along with me, I had a commenter comment and say, Hey, why don't you add the files that you're, you're editing, um, in these tutorials so we can really follow along. So I'll link it below. Okay. So first things first, this is not how the shot started out. I'm going to, I'll take you through a few of these and, and why I chose this one in particular. I'm going to reset it. I had some basic edits in Lightroom, okay? Um, initially, a little bit underexposed. Um, there's some, uh, it's a little bit dark in the hair and things like that, and it needs to be straightened out and cropped a little bit, right? But, you know, I had a few shots, right? This was a good one as well. I could have easily used this one. Um, I think I just kind of liked the pose here, the way the clothing was, the movement of the clothing, and then her face is turned more towards the camera. Um, versus this one here and this one is has some basic edits as well so you can see there's an exposure bump but um, I liked this one as well but what I really like look at the sunglasses we don't get the softbox reflection and that's a preference uh, maybe you don't want a softbox reflect reflection in the glasses maybe you find it distracting or whatever for me I had a gridded softbox up to you know camera right um, coming down towards her and I just, that was intentional. And I asked her in this shot, look more towards me and chin up just a little bit so I could see that reflection of the softbox. So this was intentional. And I just really like the way it looks. It looks like a web or something. Um, and the sunglass is just kind of cool looking. So um, that is why I didn't choose, you know, one of these over here. Um, definitely cool shots. And if I wanted to, I could probably you know, copy the web out of this one and put it in like this one if I happen to like this one better, you know, for some reason. But this one will do. And so that is the the edit that I ended up with. And then eventually I cropped it and expanded it for Instagram. So this is what, you know, the after and this is the before. So how did we get clean all this up around the edges, um, get the basic edits um, and end up here. So let's go through it. And this is going to be uh, I'll take you through my Lightroom edits and then through into Photoshop to do a little bit of cleanup, okay? So let's just start here. The thing that bothers me straight out of camera is that it's not, that it's crooked, right? And I'm going to kind of, and now it's crooked and she's off center. So we'll have to adjust that a little bit as well. So, I mean, you can clean up a lot of this stuff in the background just by cropping first, right? So I'm going to go about right there. And that's pretty good. Now, I'm almost going to crop in a little bit more because I'm thinking to myself in Photoshop, I'm going to have to clean up this edge. And maybe if I just crop in just a tiny bit more, I won't have to clean up that edge, right? Um, I'm still going to have to clean up the softbox over here and this top part over here. But that really, just cropping at first, really minimizes the work that I'm going to need to do um, in, in Photoshop later to clean up the top. And this little piece of softbox over here, which I think is going to be very easy to do. So I've got that there. Um, I'm going to cool it off just a little bit. If I remember, I think I brought it down to about 5,000. Um, before I mess with the exposure here, I'm going to bring up the highlights and the shadows. Because, you know, when you shoot JPEG, it already boosts all that stuff for you. That's why when you shoot RAW, you're missing some of that, right? It's a flat profile. So if I bring up the shadows, and what I'm looking at here is the hair. Let me bring it back down. So look at the hair. Um, I want to bring up the shadows just so I can start seeing some detail in the hair, right? Um, and maybe down here in this area in the boots and that kind of thing. So that's pretty good. Um, if I bring it up too much, it starts to flatten out the image, the, the lighting on the image. I don't want it uh, to max it out too much. Highlights are pretty good. I mean, I could bump them maybe just a little bit. And then what happens is I'll bring up my exposure until I'm kind of getting, you know, somewhere where I like that's a little bright. I'm going to bring it back down. And, you know, the highlights, like I said, they were pretty good. I'm just going to bring them back down to zero. Bring those shadows back. And we're, we're 
pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that right there. You know, you can tweak to your heart's content um, and come back later and adjust the, the highlights and the shadows as well once you're done with the edit. That's what I recommend doing. I'll usually make the edit, walk away, come back a few hours later or the next day and make my final tweaks, right? So um, I don't do a lot. I mean, straight out of camera, it was pretty good, you know, the way it was. Maybe I'll bring that vibrance up, you know, a little bit. You know, because in, in, in raw, it's like I said, it's flat and it's a good idea to bring the vibrance up, right? Um, just to bring the color up. I don't really mess with the saturation. Sometimes I'll bump it up. It depends on the shot. And then I'll go down to the sharpening down here. And I just I already know from experience it's going to be around 80. But you can hold down the alt or option key while you're dragging this slider, right? And actually you want to bring the masking. So hold down the alt or option the masking is going to tell you what you're sharpening. So everything in white is sharpened. So what did I do again there? I kind of confused myself for a second. Um, I'll bring up the sharpening, you know, probably around 80 or so. And then the masking button, that's sharpening the whole image when I do that. So it's not really, it's all relative. You can't really tell the difference. But um, if you're pixel peeping, what you want to do is bring this masking, hold down the alter option while you're dragging this masking slider. And this is gonna target certain areas of the photo to sharpen so they look even sharper because the areas around them are not as sharp. Does that make sense? So that's pretty good right there, okay? Now, you know, I mean, on the screen, you might not be able to notice a huge difference, um, but it, there is a difference. If you're going and you're a pixel people peeper, you can tell. So, I mean, I've pretty got much got this image dialed. Um, I can enable profile corrections and all that, but I'm, I'm happy with it the way it is. Um, I used a Tamron 2875 with this. Let me turn that on. Um, the G2, and I was at 40 millimeters, F6.3, 1160 on the shutter, and ISO 100. So pretty good shot there. So what I'm going to do now is bring this into Photoshop. Okay, and through the magic of editing, it comes right up immediately, right? It's probably going to be slower than that. Take longer for it to come up. Um, all I did was I right-clicked on the image in Lightroom, and I chose Edit In, Edit in Adobe Photoshop for you beginners, and I just did it again. And got another copy, so let me just close that copy and not save it. So that will open it up in Photoshop. Control-0 will center it on your canvas, right? Control-minus. We'll make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Control plus will largen, largen. It will largen it, make it a little bit larger. Um, it's still early. I'm still having my coffee, still a little tongue tied. All right. So first order of the day, I'm going to hit a control J that's going to duplicate the layer before it. In this case, it's the background and that just makes a copy of the background. That way I have everything in a new layer up here. If I screw it up, I can just delete this layer and I still have the background the way it was when I started. In other words, I can go back to where I started if I need to, if I screw up later. So that's why you want to do that, okay? Good etiquette. So the first thing I would do here is take this rectangular marquee tool, this one up here, and we want to get rid of this right here. And I'm just going to do a content aware fill. And the shortcut for that, this should be real easy, is Shift F5. So hold down your Shift and hit F5. Should say content aware fill, content aware fill, opacity 100%, hit OK. And let's see what it does. So just like that, there's a little bit of a line there, maybe. Um, didn't do as well as what I wanted to. So let's try it again. Shift F5. All right, that's a little bit better. There's a little something in the corners there. Uh, that I might have to fix. But what I would do probably is use the remove tool. And that is this one uh, right below the spot healing brush. The remove tool is right here. Okay. So first let's start with these. I don't know if you can see them, but there's like it missed a little piece in the corner here or something. So let's just use the remove tool and it cleared it up. Come over here again. I don't know if you can see it. It's just a little area right there. All right that it hit just on the very edges that it didn't get, okay? So now we'll come over here to this softbox and we can do the same method. Let's just use the remove tool, right? I think I didn't get it all. 
I did. Okay. And just like that, it takes it away and boom, we've got it cleaned up. Now you could use it. I see some spots in the paper, you know, when you zoom out, um, there's a spot right there where the paper was just kind of wrinkly, you know, and you can get those spots with the remove tool real easy. Um, there's another one. Um, so that's pretty good. I mean, we got it pretty well dialed in. Now, what about on her? Let's look at the clothing, right? Let's zoom in. There's something I notice here, some strings hanging down, right? So maybe we use the left bracket, left and right bracket next to the P key. We're still on the remove tool, right? And maybe we just come in here and there's string number one, string number two, left a little artifact right there. We'll get that. Um, that's a mole. We'll leave that. We'll come up here. Um, we'll go to the spot healing brush tool. If we wanted to, we could do, you know, the basic stuff was in this layer. Maybe we want to just flatten it down now because we know we, we, we're good. We don't, we're not going to need that. Maybe we just do um, a new blank layer and we do our spot healing brush tool, which is right below the dropper tool here. And we come in here and we get just a few. I'm not going to do like a a major edit here, you know, just a few spots that we see here. Okay. Um, because it's not like a headshot edit, you know, and you could go crazy in here and I could go into like, I've been using Evoto AI and it will do all this for me automatically. I'm just loving that tool. They're not paying me. Um, they have reached out though. So I need to, uh, reach out back to them. And see what they want. So, pretty good there. See how the reflection in the soft box? I just love it. And some of you guys may hate it. I think it looks cool. You know, it's all a matter of preference. We can come out here, you know, get some of the hair if we want. I don't think the hair is very distracting, to be honest with you. I'm fine with it. Um, especially when you, you know, there's some flyaways here, but when you zoom out, you know, you could clean it up, I guess, if you wanted to. Um, Let's flatten this down again. And you can keep all your layers if you want to. I just don't need them. Okay, when I flatten them down, I'm right-clicking and I'm choosing um, flatten on flatten layers. And that merges them all back down into the base layer, right? So probably what I would do here is do a new layer. I could have kept that other layer, I guess. But uh, let's not do a new layer. Control-Z is update. Let's do... We're going to have to select the subject first. So let's do a control J and just duplicate that whole background layer again and come up to the quick selection tool, which is right under this lasso tool, your lasso to, if you hold it down, you get all the tools available in that area. So it might be, you might have it on something else, but right now mine's the lasso tool. We don't want that. We want the one below it. Okay. Select subject button should appear at the top. It's context sensitive. That means when you click on this, button here, which is the quick selection tool that will then bring up the select subject. And I can click that button. It's going to do a pretty good job. We just need it to get some of the hair here, right? And then I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to select inverse and that's going to just select the background. She's not selected, but what I'm trying to do here is maybe come in here and clean up this hair, right? So how would I do that? A um, couple ways I could do it. I could just use the paintbrush tool or I could use the clone stamp tool. So let's start with the clone stamp tool and I'm gonna use the right or left bracket key, make it smaller or bigger. And I'm gonna hold down the alter option that gives me the little target. I'm gonna target a sample. So I'm gonna target this spot right here because what I wanna do is take whatever's here and put it over here. You see when I highlight it, right? It's coming over here. Now I've got my hardness at 54. Let's bring it down because I don't really need any detail. So I'm going to make it a real soft uh, brush. And I'm going to set my flow to like uh, 25%. Okay. And we'll come down here, maybe make it a little larger and just kind of come here, just like this. See the target over there to the left? Be careful that you can already see it's ghosting, right? So that's what you got to be careful of. I'm going to hit Control Z, start over. Make this a little smaller. Maybe grab a target right here. You got to watch that little crosshair is what I'm trying to say. Okay, lift up. That way if I need to do an undo, see, I'm already getting over there. I don't want to get too far, right? So maybe I grab 
a sample right here because it gets lighter as it goes down so you want to sample as you go you don't want there to be you know an obvious edit and there may be when you when you zoom when i zoom out it might be obvious i don't have to look at it and see so we get that spot these i'm not too concerned with but i'm sampling i'm moving upward and downward so hopefully the sample follows the light pattern because it gets a lighter as it goes down right so i'm not picking a dark spot up here and then coming down here and doing it because when you do that you know like say i pick a dark spot and then see what happens i start painting over here it's obvious right so you don't want to do that you want to pick a spot relative to where you are so maybe if i'm here at work my way down so it follows it, the light pattern right that's what it mimics i'm good with that let me zoom out. Zooming out is important. Make sure you can't see that you made an obvious edit, right? Okay, I'm good with that. Now, what I also like to do, the background, I can still see like a little bit of line. I, it's not as evident maybe when you zoom in, but there's like a little line here where we originally did that um, content aware fill. Um, and there's some thing, you know, maybe... I'll just take the brush, the paintbrush, and bring it back to a flow of like, 15% okay and right bracket key make this a little larger and maybe I just make it real large so we don't see any streaks make sure you've got the soft brush hardness was 65 so bring that down to zero you'll get streaks right if you have like a harder brush so you want a real soft brush and maybe just sample hold down the alter option that gives you your dropper sample that color right there it's not really color it's a shade of gray but you know what i mean and just lightly paint um, maybe here's a color there i'm going to lightly paint right there's a color there shade of gray you get the idea and you can see it's just kind of i'm blending it but i'm not i'm at such i'm at 15 percent flow lights so that's how much ink is coming out of my pen so to speak right the flow of it is only down to 15 percent, so i don't really have um, a strong flow and i like the shadows it provides depth so i'm going to pretty much leave that you know maybe i'll kind of do that right there just to kind of clean it up and then this one right here just to kind of blend the shadow a little bit right there and with that i'm pretty good with the background cleanup maybe i'll do a little bit more over there okay so control D deselects all. Okay. Turn the layer off. And there, as you can see the background, the way it is, turn it on and it's just kind of cleaned up. We're looking at the hair. I'll turn it off. So let's look at the hair. That was initially the first edit, right? There's before and there's after cleaned it up pretty well. You know, I did darken up the background a little bit, but that was part of the blending process. Maybe I should have taken a lighter shade of gray. Um, but your mileage may vary, you know, you just have to play around with it. You, you don't want to um, muscle that background color shade of gray in. You really want to just finesse it in, right? So maybe I take this color here and make it a little lighter. Okay, and that's all there is to it. And if I want to crop at this point for Instagram, um, I can come over here to the crop tool just like that and I'm using four by five which is up here in the top left right under the image and layer menu four by five you can bring it down um, it'll either be on original ratio or whatever you had it last time I'm at four by five so you can see that presents a problem so what I'm gonna do is what you need uh, I'm gonna turn this off actually when you click on that crop it's gonna give you a, a rectangle right but what you need to do is click on the image one time left click until you get these crosshairs that's going to activate the crop if you don't do that and you start trying to move it around weird things happen click on it once so you get these these cross lines here and then these handles on the edge right here just click and drag and pull it up okay until you get the headroom that you want i kind of like the original headroom and then pull this down right there and you can see now i've got white bars on the side but i want content aware to fill it in we'll try content aware first so change background up here to content aware and then hit the checkbox. hopefully we don't have to do any more background cleanup we may we'll see pretty good maybe i want to do hit the the rectangular marquee tool maybe i come over here and do another content aware fill maybe i come down here and see how it gave me a line right there i go just outside of that line i don't know if you can see you can probably see it when it's smaller but 
that's pretty good. So I'm just trying to get there's a like a line of shadow that I don't like that 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 it came down and did. I don't know why I just hit select and mask. So let's just do a shift F five again, content aware, hit OK. And let's see if it'll kind of clean that up for me. So that's a little bit better. I still see a line right there. It's very faint, but it's like a vertical line <laughs> where the original this is what drives me crazy. So let's go back to our trusty old paintbrush. Actually, let's do a quick selection tool. Remember we did that earlier? It's right here below the lasso tool, select subject. I have a button for that, select subject, select inverse, but I'm gonna right click and choose select inverse. I got a button, I just hit that and it does it for me, right? Now I'm gonna go back to the paintbrush. We did this earlier. Hold down the alter option. The paintbrush is on flow 15%, soft brush, zero hardness. And maybe I come over here and I just grab that, come here. And I'm just trying to get rid of the little line there that, that came up. And you might not even be able to see that line. I can see it. It drives me crazy. But I pretty much just got rid of it. Um, maybe come here. Kind of smooth this out just a little bit. And I'm happy with that. Um, there's a little bit of roughness in the paper down there. But, uh, you know, that's all right. So Control-D. And I think I'm pretty much going to hit Control-S. That's save. Okay, so originally we started out there. We did some edits. Uh, let's go to develop. Move me out of the way. I think I had my edits pasted or copied. Yeah, we did some edits and we ended up kind of about right there. Okay. And then we brought it into Photoshop and we ended up with that. And that ended up being the final shot that I delivered to the customer not actually the final shot because this is a re-edit. Um, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit bright in spots. So I'll usually walk away, come back and tweak it a little bit more. Maybe I'll get this little spot on the knee right there that I see now. So that's just a good idea to do. But anyway, if you're still hanging in there, thanks for watching. Uh, give it a like and a subscribe and we'll see you next time.